Hey friends, welcome back for the last and final chapter of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. What we learned in the last couple chapters that we read was Charlie is the only child left out of the whole group that listened and followed directions and didn't get sent away. So Mr. Wonka pushed a button on the elevator that said up and out and they went flying up through the roof of the Chocolate Factory out into the sky to look around and they saw the other children leaving and going home and now Mr. Wonka is going to surprise Charlie with the grand prize. Let's read chapter 30 called Charlie's Chocolate Factory. I bet you can guess what's gonna happen. The great glass elevator was now hovering high over the town. Inside the elevator stood Mr. Wonka, Grandpa Joe, and little Charlie. How I love my chocolate factory, said Mr. Wonka, gazing down. Then he paused and he turned around and looked at Charlie with the most serious expression on his face. Do you love it too, Charlie? He asked. Oh yes, cried Charlie. I think it's the most wonderful place in the whole world. I am very pleased to hear you say that, said Mr. Wonka, looking more serious than ever. He went on staring at Charlie. Yes, he said, I am very pleased indeed to hear you say that, and now I shall tell you why. Mr. Wonka cocked his head to one side, and all at once the tiny twinkling wrinkles of a smile appeared around the corners of his eyes, and he said, You see, my dear boy, I have decided to make you a present of the whole place. As soon as you are old enough to run it, the entire factory will become yours. Charlie stared at Mr. Wonka. Grandpa Joe opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. It's quite true, Mr. Wonka said, smiling broadly now. I really am giving it to you. That's all right, isn't it? Giving it to him, gasped Grandpa Joe. You must be joking. I am not joking, sir. I am deadly serious. But, but why would you want to give your factory to little Charlie? Listen, Mr. Wonka said, I am an old man. I am much older than you think. I can't go on forever. I've got no children of my own, no family at all. So who is going to run the factory when I get too old to do it myself? Someone's got to keep it going, if only for the sake of the Oompa Loompas. Mind you, there are thousands of clever men who would give anything for the chance to come in and take over for me. But I don't want that sort of person. I don't want a grown-up person at all. A grown-up won't listen to me. He won't learn. He will try to do things his own way and not mine. So I have to have a child. I want a good, sensible, loving child. One whom I can tell all my most precious candy-making secrets while I'm still alive. So that's why you sent out the golden tickets, cried Charlie. Exactly, said Mr. Wonka. I decided to invite five children to the factory, and the one I liked the best at the end of the day would be the winner. But Mr. Wonka, stammered Grandpa Joe, do you really and truly mean that you're giving the whole of this enormous factory to little Charlie? After all, there are no time for arguments, cried Mr. Wonka. We must go at once and fetch the rest of the family, Charlie's father and mother and anyone else that's around. They can all live in the factory from now on. They can help run it until Charlie is old enough to do it by himself. Where do you live, Charlie? Charlie peered down through the glass elevator at the snow-covered houses that lay below. It's over there, he said, pointing. It's the little cottage right on the edge of town, the tiny little one. I see it, cried Mr. Wonka, and he pressed some more buttons and the elevator shot down towards Charlie's house. I'm afraid my mother won't come with us, Charlie said sadly. Why ever not? Because she won't leave Grandma Josephine and Grandma Georgina and Grandpa George. But they must come too. They can't, Charlie said. They're very old and they haven't been out of bed for 20 years. Then we'll take the bed along with us. With them in it, said Mr. Wonka. There's plenty of room in this elevator for a bed. You couldn't get the bed out of the house, said Grandpa Joe. It won't go through the door. You mustn't despair, cried Mr. Wonka. Nothing's impossible. You watch. The elevator was now hovering over the roof of the bucket's little house. What are you going to do, cried Charlie. I'm going to go in and fetch them, said Mr. Wonka. How, asked Grandpa Joe. Through the roof, said Mr. Wonka, pressing another button. 
No, shouted Charlie. Stop, shouted Grandpa Joe. Crash went the elevator right down through the roof of the house into the old people's bedroom. Showers of dust and broken tiles and bits of wood and cockroaches and spiders and bricks and cement went raining down on the three old ones who were lying in bed. And each of them thought this was the end of the world. Grandma Georgina fainted. Grandma Josephine dropped her false teeth. Grandpa George put his head under his blanket. And Mr. and Mrs. Bucket came rushing in from the next room. Save us, cried Grandma Josephine. Calm yourself, my darling wife, said Grandpa Joe, stepping out of the elevator. It's only us. Mother, cried Charlie, rushing into Mrs. Bucket's arms. Mother, mother, listen to what's happened. We're all going to live in Mr. Wonka's factory, and we're going to help him run it, and he's given it all to me, and, and, and... What are you talking about, said Mrs. Bucket. Just look at our house, cried Mr. Poor Bucket. Cried poor Mr. Bucket. It's in ruins. My dear sir, Mr. Wonka jumped forward and shaking Mr. Bucket warmly by the hand, I'm so very glad to meet you. You mustn't worry about your house. From now on, you'll never need it again anyway. Who is this crazy man? Screamed Grandma Josephine. He could have killed us all. This, said Grandpa Joe, is Mr. Willy Wonka himself. It took quite time for Grandpa Joe and Charlie to explain to everyone exactly what had happened to them all. And even then, they all refused to ride back to the factory in the elevator. I'd rather die in my bed, shouted Grandma Josephine. So would I, cried Grandma Georgina. I refuse to go, announced Grandpa George. So Mr. Wonka and Grandpa Joe and Charlie, taking no notice of their screams, simply pushed the bed into the elevator. They pushed Mr. and Mrs. Bucket in after them. Then they got in themselves. Mr. Wonka pressed a button. The doors closed. Grandma Georgina screamed, and the elevator rose up off the floor and shot out through the hole in the roof, right out into the open sky. Charlie climbed onto bed and tried to calm down the three old people, who were still petrified with fear. Please don't be frightened, he said. It's quite safe, and we're going to the most wonderful place in the world. Charlie's right said Grandpa Joe. Will, be there eh, will there be anything to eat when we get there? Asked Grandma Josephine. I'm starving. The whole family is starving. Anything to eat, cried Charlie laughing. Oh, just you wait and see. And that is the end of one of my favorite books of all time, Roald Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I encourage you to get a copy for yourself and try to read it by yourself someday. It's probably too long and hard for you now, but later you'll be able to read it. And then also, if you get an opportunity, go ahead and watch the movie. There are lots of things in the movie that you can compare and contrast to the book. There's an older movie called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, I think. And then there's one called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Both of them are very different and they're very different from the book as well. But it's pretty fun to compare and contrast things that are the same and things that are different. I hope you enjoyed this story and you continue to read, read, read. Thanks for listening.